Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Sam Brager. I am the outreach coordinator for the Utah Lake Commission. Um, do me a favor if you would, uh, someone or anyone, if you want to comment vocally or just in the chat, just want to make sure everybody can hear me okay. Okay, thanks, Tim, for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. And thank you, everybody, for commenting in the chat. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, we did have a slight change in the agenda. Unfortunately, um, Michael Packer with DWR, uh, Division of Wildlife Resources, who was going to be with us, could not make it tonight. Um, so I am your sole host for the evening. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started into the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions while we're going through things tonight, um, I'm happy to take questions at the end or if you'd like so that you don't forget, maybe you can put it in the chat and we can get to those at the Q&A at the end as well. Uh, but tonight's presentation is specifically in regards to understanding how the Fish Fest is going to work. And we've also got some kind of helpful information like uh, some of the results of uh, last year's Fish Fest as in where what types of fish were found, if that's uh, hopefully intriguing to some of you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get going on sharing our screen here. Um, like I said, any questions or comments during it, if you put them in the chat or hold on till the end, you're welcome to ask verbally as well. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We're excited to offer this. We didn't do this last year, but we're hoping uh, the four different workshops will be useful information for everybody in regards to angling at the lake, as well as other related topics to the lake. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. And we need to change from our wonderful screensaver uh, presentation over to tonight's. So let's do that. Let's see. Let's stop that. Perfect. Okay. That's kind of in the way here. There we go. Okay. So let's go right into our slides here. And hopefully everybody can see that all right. Um, please comment in the chat if you can't see the slides, but I think we're good to go. So as I mentioned, this is kind of an introduction to the Fish Fest. So here's kind of our quick agenda. Um, we'll do kind of a quick uh, who, what, where, when, why version of the, the contest. And then I'll have some more details on how you can stay safe, have fun, uh, the importance of some of the rules that are kind of structure the contest. Um, some information, as I mentioned, from the results from last year that were collected from the submissions that were made. Um, just a quick reminder about registration, some information about the prizes, uh, a heads up about the workshops that will be coming, um, a thank you to our partners and sponsors, and then a question and answer period at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and get going. So really quick, as a, by way of introduction, if you have not heard already of the Utah Lake Commission, we're what's referred to as an interlocal government agency. That means all of these logos you see on there, and frankly, we may have a couple more, um, all make up membership of the commission. So all of the cities that you see on there have a mayor or city council member, and then the state agencies and local water district have some of their managers and directors who sit on the board of the commission. You may ask, what does the commission do? So these are the five uh, goals or objectives of the commission. Uh, the commission was founded in 2007. And the goal really was first and foremost, that first line, which was to foster communication and coordination between commission members, as well as the public, because there's so many different interests at the lake. And there's so many different responsibilities there as well. And we also work to promote resource utilization and protection, trying to find that balance between conservation and enhancement, providing better amenities, um, which mentioned that mentioning that is our third point, which is maintaining and developing recreation access. Um, in our presentation next week about the past, present, and future of the lake, we'll actually be highlighting a couple of exciting uh, projects, uh, in particular some we're hoping to do this coming year uh, in regards to some of our angler and hunter access points at the lake. Um, we also monitor and promote responsible economic development, that there is a desire for homes to be near the lake, uh, but that that can be done responsibly by leaving uh, beaches and hunting access and trails that are also there for the lake too. And we also work to encourage and promote multiple uses of the lake. As I mentioned, really we're meant there to be, to connect with all these various partners and try and balance all those interests as best possible. So this event is one of those efforts to try and help people learn more about the lake and have a good time down there. So the quick version of the event, okay, so who? 
anglers, really of any skill set. This is meant to be as welcoming to uh, people who are beginners to even those who have, are advanced and been doing this for a long time. Um, what exactly is it? It's a fishing challenge. So you catch fish at Utah Lake specifically. I want to be clear about that. Last year, we had a couple of people confused thinking of other Utah lakes instead of the Utah Lake. But you catch the fish, you take photos, and you submit them for chances to win prizes, and then you get to learn about the lake um, and also just spend some time outside, um, which uh, we all know we need more of during this uh, pandemic. Uh, for the where, this is meant to be only at Utah Lake and the mouth of its tributaries. I will show the map a little bit later um, <clears throat> for anybody who wants to discuss a question on the boundaries. Um, any of the 27 access points are fine. Please do remember, though, that if you go to one of the marinas that does charge an entrance fee, that that is still required. Um, however, uh, speaking of marina specifically, uh, if you do not know, Lincoln Beach does not charge an ent entrance fee at all, even if you're launching a boat. Um, Saratoga Springs City Marina, Pelican Bay Marina is another name for that. If you are not launching a craft, there is no entrance fee. Um, and then American Fork Marina kind of depends on the season, but Linden and Utah Lake State Park do definitely still charge fees for entrance. Uh, but any of the 27 public access points listed on our website are, are fair game. Um, the event itself runs from today until the 29th at 1159 p.m. is when that submission form closes. So any time or day you want to go out during that period, as many times as you want, totally fine. And we'll go over the submission process and how that works for how many times you'll submit. But why? Why are we doing this event? We want you to get out and enjoy yourself fishing at Utah Lake and learn a little bit more about the lake. A lot of people don't realize uh, not only the great winter fishing, but year-round fishing that Utah Lake offers. Now, granted, there's a lot of great things to be found at other water bodies as well. Um, but we love providing opportunities for people to learn about the good experience you can have down there. And then what's in it for you? Obviously, prizes are great. <laughs> we know you guys love those, um, but it's a great way to spend some time outside. Um, if you're new to ice fishing, learning a little bit of a skill. In fact, tomorrow's workshop will be about the basics of ice fishing. Um, and then challenging yourself with some new angling goals, like how many different species of the 12 that we have listed for the challenge can you catch, right? So go a little further into detail. Staying safe out on the ice is very important. Uh, this comes from the State Parks website, No Ice is Safe Ice. Um, so the way the contest is designed, you do not have to go out on the ice. You can fish from a dock, from a jetty. Um, if there's open water, you can go out on a boat. Um, there's no requirement that it be ice fishing per se, but we would love for you to be able to learn more about that um, particular subset of fishing. Um, there's a great link here in the slides. Um, it's also listed on our website to go to the State Parks website for uh, tips for and recommendations for ice safety. Um, there's also a great chart here. I just realized our little bar is kind of blocking it. I'm going to move this back up top. Um, but you can see the recommendations for thickness. Um, that if you're going out by yourself, they recommend at least four inches uh, for safety. Fun. Um, it's not your traditional fishing tournament. Uh, this isn't the kind where you show up in one location on one day, you bring your fish in, you physically measure them or weigh them, turn them in, etc. This is meant to be as hands off as possible for uh, event staff. So this is designed where you can operate solely by yourself with the information online, with the submission form, and with a phone or some other way of taking pictures and submitting them. Um, there's these workshops. We want you to have fun learning more about them. And we'll get to workshops about what those are if you haven't read about them already. And then another thing that makes this unique and we want to have fun is that we want to be open to feedback. So there will be a post-challenge survey. And if you have thoughts or ideas, you can always shoot us an email or message us on social media during the challenge as well. Um, but your feedback is valuable to us in adjusting this event. Um, if any of you who are listening did this last year, you'll be able to tell quickly that a lot has changed um, for trying different ideas from our own thoughts um, for improvement as well as feedback we received from anglers. And then the rules. The rules obviously are very important. Um, if you haven't looked at the rules already, please do make sure you read them. They're on the blog post on our website. Um, I'll hit on a couple things in particular while we're talking about rules. Um, but it's really meant to help you understand how the contest functions, especially because it is not your, your standard or, or traditional uh, fishing tournament. Okay. Um, the first thing uh, being the boundaries map, we have the map listed on the blog post. It's meant to be the entirety of the lake. And then for the main, I believe it was just the main three tributaries, uh, Provo River, Spanish Fork River, and American Fork River, we did, or I guess not really American Fork River, but at least Spanish Fork and Provo, we did include just a little bit into the mouth 
excuse me, into the mouth of the river. I think if I remember correctly, Provo River, it's all the way up to the uh, the bridge where you drive across to enter into the state park. Uh, we do allow you if you want to fish there at the mouth, that's fine too. Um, the angler identifier card. This is a really important part. So the, the purpose behind this card is you need to either print it off or you can display it on a smart device when you take the picture. But that angler identifier card needs to be in every photo you submit. And that's simply just to ensure that these are fish caught during this time period. So you should have all received an email already welcoming you after you registered. And that had with it your angler identifier card, uh, the link for submissions to be able to upload your photos, as well as some other helpful information. If you don't have that, please make sure to reach out to us. Uh, my contact information is at the end of the slides, but it's sam, S-A-M at utalic.org. We'd love to make sure you get that so that you have all the information you need. Same thing with the submission form. Um, I'd be happy to go through it, but if anybody has questions specifically, but it's pretty straightforward um, with the questions, um, they're, the way it's divided is into raffle and additional categories. The way that works is there are links where you can upload your photos based upon the species that you catch. Okay, um, so if you catch a white bass, you select, it asks you what species did you catch? You select white bass and the next question will say, please upload your white bass photo and you upload it there. So for each of the species, that's how it will function as you select and you can only uh, upload one photo at a time. You do need to take the, the submission form for each photo that you submit. Um, for the additional categories, those are all in one spot. Um, and the additional categories are the longest catfish caught, most fish caught in one trip, um, the most species caught, which that one you don't actually submit your photos, our staff will be monitoring the raffle uh, entries of each species, and we'll count up who's caught the most. And then the fourth one is, uh, or the additional categories is the best photo background. Um, so that's, you know, while you're out there, there's a lot of great sunsets or sunrises. You've got great views of Mount Timpanogos and the other mountains, um, or any of the other great scenery at the lake that you can submit uh, a picture of yourself with the best background to try and win a prize there too. So we will go over some more of this information in the slides, but like I said, during the Q&A at the end, wanted to try and get through these slides and leave most of our time for Q&A um, in case there are questions and I can kind of display our map, display the rules, display the submission form, and we can go over that if there's any questions. Okay, so now to our part of sharing some information from last year to try and help out anybody who did it last year or those who are new this year. So this pie chart shows the species caught at the lake. Now, if you've received your registration welcome email already, you saw the list of the 12 species of fish that we include in the challenge. And you'll notice not all of them are on here. So last year, there were, I think, four species that no one caught uh, during the challenge. I think carp uh, was one. No one caught any walleye either. Uh, I can't remember the other two offhand, uh, but you'll notice quite a large percentage of yellow perch from those who uh, participated and submitted their photos. White bass, uh, obviously a strong one too, and then you can see the other percentages there. Um, but you're likely to see probably something similar, right? Now that could be different. Uh, each angler submitted different uh, different species um, and based, based off their location too, which leads me to our next slide which is broken down by location and species. So I know you have to kind of turn your head to the side a little bit to look at the, the access points, but looking along the bottom, you'll see that we have three different locations where black crappie were caught, two locations for bluegill, uh, one for bullhead catfish, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. And this is from those that were submitted, right? So that's all we have to pull from data of last year. But you'll notice, obviously, yellow perch, a whole bunch were submitted and caught. Um, you can see that Saratoga Spring City Marina seemed to be a good spot for yellow perch and American Fork Marina uh, versus largemouth bass. Really, you only saw, at least from what people submitted, was at Palo Slough North where they found those. So kind of some cool info there. You can get a screenshot or, like I said, um, in the email we sent out earlier today, this is being recorded. We tried to set up live stream, but it's not working for some reason. But we'll make sure that we post it to YouTube tonight so that anybody can review it and take a look. But there's some fun info from last year that uh, we appreciate you to listening in so that you could see that tonight. Um, next, just a brief reminder about registration. Um, first off, we do want to make sure you register for that. Uh, that's just the process to make sure that we track how many people are attending. That helps us be informed um, for evaluating the event and improving it in the future. So we do ask you to please use the same email address when you submit. It also asks your email, and that's to try and track if this person's been registered or not. Uh, but it is required for participation. 
Okay, prizes. I know everybody who, who uh, joined tonight, probably this is what you were wanting, I'm sure. Um, so there are three different prize packages um, that we've put together with ice fishing gear. Um, and we structured these to be kind of uh, a package for somebody who's maybe just barely starting at ice fishing, maybe someone who's been kind of doing it for a while as an intermediate, and maybe somebody who's been doing it for a while and wants some new gear to try out. Um, so the one on the far right of the screen you'll see, um, you can't go ice fishing without a hand auger, right? That makes it a little difficult. So we've got one with a hand auger with a uh, ugly stick, elite, elite uh, rod and reel, and then a V-ice rod holder. Um, for kind of the intermediate, we've got the one on the far left, Eskimo ice chair, a jaw jacker for holding your rod, and then a Rapala fillet knife with sheath and a knife sharpener as well. And then the one in the middle is kind of geared more towards someone who's been doing this for a while, really likes to have some extra tools and toys to play with. The uh, jigging jaw jacker base is uh, very similar to the jaw jacker, just a little bit more of an upgrade. Uh, a little bit, a few more features. And then the 13 fishing descent ice reel came highly recommended to us um, with Al Sporting Goods, our, our partner or our sponsor for this. And then a Loon Outdoors retractor, because we all know there's gear that comes with fishing. And so being able to keep that on a retractor can be handy. And we felt that could be useful for some of the tools you might already have. So those are our prize packages that we've got. Um, and those, there will be one prize for each of the four additional categories that we mentioned, the largest or longest catfish, most fish caught, most species caught, and the best photo background. And then we do have four more of these kits for the raffle drawing as well. Um, and that will go off of the raffle entries. Now, besides prizes, we also have workshops as a part of this event. So tonight's event is the welcome and introductions where we're going over the Fish Fest, uh, be able to answer questions, kind of help you get started as today's the first day. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., Peyton Skidmore with Skiddy Fishing will be doing a basics of ice fishing workshop for us, uh, displaying equipment and helping those who either are beginners at ice fishing or would like to maybe a little refresh or hear somebody else's opinion on how uh, ice fishing can function. Uh, next week on the 25th, um, our staff will be talking about the past, present, and future of the lake, um, sharing information about projects that are going on right now, about some of the history of the lake and what we see happening in the future at Utah Lake. And uh, a spoiler, as I mentioned there, there's some new amenities and improved access coming. We're really excited to share that information. So definitely tune into that workshop. And then last but not least, on the 27th next week, we have Russ Franklin with the June Sucker Recovery Implementation Program. I know it's a mouthful, uh, JSRIP for short, um, but he is going to be talking about the history of the recovery efforts for the June Sucker Program all the way back from the 1980s and what they're working on now as well to show some of the successes, some of the challenges they faced, and hopefully where the program is going as we move into the future. So we're really excited. This is an element that was requested last year to have some kind of educational element. Um, we weren't able to set something up in person this year, but maybe next year that could be done. Uh, but we hope you enjoy uh, the Zoom series. So the link that you use tonight will be the same link for each of these events. And then each one will be recorded and will be put on our YouTube channel. We'll make sure we send out an email to share the playlist so that you can check each of those as they are recorded and saved on the YouTube channel. Again, wanted to thank our partners and sponsors. DWR has been a great uh, partner with helping us structure this and be able to figure out how we can make it as user-friendly as possible, being a bit of a different approach to a fishing uh, uh, event. And then Al Sporting Goods uh, is our partner in the prizes. Um, we appreciate their sponsorship in making that happen for everyone. Now, the next slide here, I've got listed, obviously, my contact information, my email and my cell phone. Um, I'm happy to be a resource for you during the event. Um, I would be happy to take any questions that anybody has. Um, as I mentioned before, happy to display uh, the boundaries map or the submission form or the rules so we could go over the raffle entries. I'd love to hear what you would like to hear more about those who are attending this live right now. Seems all's quiet, which is okay. If somebody has a question, if you don't feel like voicing it, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, one thing I do want to make sure that I hit on, and actually let's double check the chat to make sure, okay, those are just yeses that you can hear me again. I appreciate that. Ooh, uh, Carlos, thanks for the question. 
Uh, tips on where to find largemouth? That is a great question. And I apologize. That's where we were hoping to have Michael Packer with DWR on with us. Um, what might be good is I can reach out to him and see if we can shoot out an email to everybody. Um, maybe tomorrow or start of next week to try and give some tips on specific locations. Um, based off the data that was shown, I don't know if you joined in early, Carlos, but last year, uh, largemouth was found a lot at Powell Slough North Access Point, which is right over there by Sleepy Ridge Golf Course. Um, so that's all I've got for you now, but I appreciate you asking. We'll see if we can get more info. Um, as far as ice at Provo Marina, Seth, I appreciate you asking that question. Um, just saw a post this afternoon from the park manager at Utah Lake State Park stating they had a lot of ice pile up at their marina and visible open water just outside the marina. Now, he did not mention specifically how thick the ice is in the marina, but from those conditions, I would take caution. Um, he does list on their website. If you just Google Utah Lake State Park, you can pull up their website and he lists uh, conditions at their marina as frequently as he can. Or if you don't see up-to-date information there, you can actually give them a call and someone can give you up-to-date info uh, anytime you call. Um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Alex, thanks for the question. It says, is there any open water or is the lake all ice? I think I just caught up on that one, but it seems there are some large patches of open water uh, based off the change in weather. When that ice starts stacking up, it comes on the shoreline and leaves more exposed water. Um, Seth, I, I would recommend definitely do be careful on the thickness of the ice. I'm, I'm six foot two and 230 pounds myself, so I can totally understand that. Uh, weight's a, a good thing to be aware of. Um, Feel free to add any other questions in the chat if you have them. I did want to hit on one thing uh, based off a conversation. I had one of the anglers call me earlier today. So I did want to real briefly go over how the submission process works um, because, again, it is different from how things were run last year. Uh, so let's stop presenting. Let's go over to our rules. So there are, um, oh boy, there are 12 species listed. And I think we've got that chart right here. Here we are. So there's 12 species that are in uh, the contest. And what I mean by that is you'll notice that June sucker is not on here. We do not reward people who catch June sucker as a threatened species. However, you can see there's some great options here. And they've been ranked by DWR as far as their difficulty level of finding and catching them during the wintertime. So white bass and yellow perch being the easiest, then black crappy, bluegill and green sunfish all the way down the list. So the way the raffle portion works, okay, is you get one raffle entry per species you catch. So if you go out fishing tonight or tomorrow, let's say, and you catch a white bass right off, right off the bat, you can take a picture of that white bass. And then when you want to right then, or when you get home, you would submit the photo, you would select white bass as your option of your species you caught and upload that photo. The reason I explain that is because if you keep catching white bass that day, unless you're accruing them for the most fish caught category, you do not need to take another picture of a white bass. If you submit more than one photo of white bass to the raffle portion of the submission form, you won't get any additional raffle entries. It's one per species. So if you catch one white bass, uh, one black crappie, and one bluegill, that's three raffle entries total, regardless of how many of those species each you catch. Okay. Now there are some ways to earn additional entries in the raffle. And that is if you catch all of the species within a difficulty level. So for instance, if you catch a white bass and a yellow perch, you'll get one raffle entry each two, but you'll get a third raffle entry because you caught all the easy category. Okay. So really, you know, if you had great luck, you'd only have to catch two fish to get three raffle entries and that'd be done. You could leave for the day. <laughs> Same thing for moderate. If you catch all three black crappy bluegill and green sunfish, you'll get four raffle entries. Okay. But again, a reminder, once you've caught one, and this is just for the raffle portion. Okay. We'll get to the additional categories in a moment, but for the raffle portion, you only need to submit one photo of each species. And that helps cut down on our workload. Last year, we had 407 photos come in. That was a lot of work to try and review each one individually. And so we tried to structure this down differently where you're getting raffle entries versus last year you had to start accruing points and you got less raffle entries than you did points. A little bit more complicated. So this year is simpler, both for submissions as well as for reviewing on the back end. So that's how the raffle works. Let me know if there's any questions. Feel free to put it into the chat.
but I want to talk about the additional categories as well. Okay. So the raffle entries is one part of the submission form and we'll, we'll go over the submission form too in a moment, but the other portion is our additional prize categories that we're showing here. And this year, those four are listed and underlined here and we'll go over that, but this is going to be one of the questions on the feedback survey at the end of the challenge is what kind of additional categories would you like to see? Is there something else you'd like? So the first one is longest catfish caught. It can be bullhead or channel. If you go back and look at the rules, I won't go over it now um, just to save on time. Um, but there are some specifications. You have to have a measuring device, et cetera, in the picture, right? And your angler identifier card. So longest catfish, you can submit this one over and over again. So this one, if I go tomorrow and I catch a catfish and it's 15 inches long, I could submit that or I can hold on to the photo, totally up to you, whichever one you want. But if I go out again on Sunday and I catch one that's 17 inches long, I'm probably gonna take the photo and submit it again. So it's up to you um, if you wanna try and keep them until the end of the contest and submit the longest one you get, that's less work for us on the back end. but we're willing to sort through them and look for the longest one, okay? Same thing with most fish caught. For this one, if you catch 10 fish today and you wanna take a picture of that to try and submit, Go right ahead, and if you go out again the day after that and catch 25, 35, 45, whatever the number is, you can keep submitting for this. You don't have to. Again, you can hold on to your photos and just submit one at the end, but if you're afraid you're going to forget, like I probably would, totally okay if you submit more than one. Um, most species caught. Again, you will not be submitting photos. We will analyze the raffle portion and see if somebody gets five or seven or all 12 of the species for that prize. Best photo background, same thing applies as the most fish caught and longest catfish. You can keep submitting photos. If you keep getting awesome sunset photos, totally okay to keep submitting those for that. And we're excited to see the uh, beautiful scenery you guys see while you're out there. Okay. So that's kind of how the raffle portion works. So you'll get raffle entries for the species. And then these prizes will be allocated based off of who has the longest, who caught the most, um, who has the most species. And then the best photo background is uh, based off of a selection from the Utah Lake Commission staff and DWR staff as to what their preference is. Okay. Now, real quickly, I did want to show, now that I explained that, how that looks on the submission form. So this is the submission form. When you click on that link, it does explain to you the four sections of the form, that there's the raffle entry. That's where you'll pick which species you caught and then upload your, your photo for that. Um, and then the additional categories are all on one page. And then there's also a question about where did you catch this? Again, this is to try and help us track kind of loosely an idea of where fish are being caught, um, what types of fish are being caught where. And we're hoping that that can be kind of a good foundation in the future of helping DWR uh, determine how they can do sampling with some of the plans they have. So um, you would type in your email address. So I'll type in sam at utahlake.org here. You hit next. Then you get to the raffle portion. So this is where you select which species. If you're a novice angler like myself, we included photos so you can know which one it was. So I'll pick a bullhead catfish for mine and go, there is even one for an unsure if you're not certain um, after seeing the pictures, you'll hit next. It will pop up, like I said, species specific. And if I were to go back and change the species, it will upload that. And then it does require a file. So you all get to see, I guess, some pictures here from uh, my uh, Google Drive. <laughs> We'll upload, here we go. We'll just pretend that's a picture of a fish for submission. So you would up, you'd upload it, hit next. And then the additional categories, as I mentioned, it goes over the description again of what each one is, and then you can upload a file, right? If you catch the catfish, you'll upload the picture. We ask you to put in the length in inches. Most fish caught and tell us how many you caught. And then best photo background. You'll notice that the most species caught is not included because you are not submitting for that. We'll be analyzing that afterwards. Now, these are not required, so I don't have to put in anything. And I can go next. And then I would say, where did I catch my fish? Now, this is meant to be for the raffle drawing one. So we'll say I caught that American Fort Marina. You hit submit and you're done. So pretty straightforward submission form, but I want to make sure I covered that and how the raffle works. Those seem to be some questions we'd already had from people calling in and emailing. Um, let me take a look and see if there's any additional information I wanted to make sure we covered. Um, I think we've hit it all. So I guess, are there any other questions about what we've covered tonight or anything we haven't covered tonight?
Okay, I'm going to take silence as a good thing that we did an okay job covering everything. Uh, as we mentioned before, this video will be on YouTube for anybody to review afterwards that's interested. Um, feel free to message us on Instagram at Utah Lake or find our Facebook page, Utah Lake Commission on Facebook. Um, or like I said, feel free to shoot me an email directly at sam at utahlake.org. But thank you everybody for tuning in. If you have the time tomorrow morning, um, I will be on with uh, Peyton doing our basics of ice fishing. Uh, workshop at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And then, as I said, we will have two more workshops next week during the week. We really hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful. I really appreciate the questions that were asked and best of luck. I hope you enjoy fishing out there and can't wait to see the photos of everything you guys catch. Thank you so much for tuning in. You all have a wonderful evening.